Good morning. I'm Sam Collins and I'm the Bereavement Support Specialist Midwife at University Hospitals Coventry and Warwickshire NHS Trust. I'd like to thank Rupert Chilvers and the RCM for inviting me to speak today about developing a quality bereavement service in maternity. And I also have with me Claire Allen, who is our modern matron for inpatient services and fetal wellbeing unit. I'd like to start by giving you a bit of background about University Hospital Coventry and my role there as bereavement support midwife. And then I'd like to share with you some of our successes at Coventry and discuss recommendations for improving existing bereavement services in maternity. But before I do that, I'd like to start with a quote from Neil Long, who is the former chief executive, former chief executive of SANS. The quality of care that bereaved parents receive has a profound effect on their well-being and that of their families, both now and in the future. Good care cannot remove the pain of their grief, but poor care makes everything worse. And one of SANS, the Stillbirth and Neonatal Death Society's five standards in improving bereavement care, is that all maternity unit staff should have access to a specially trained bereavement midwife who is responsible for staff training and support and for monitoring policies and procedures to ensure that bereaved parents receive good quality care. So I just want to give you a little bit of background. University Hospitals Coventry and Warwickshire NHS Trust is one of the UK's largest NHS trusts and serves a population of around a million patients across Coventry, Warwickshire and beyond. Through maternity we have around 6,000 deliveries every year and Coventry has a very diverse population so we see some very high risk women with some very complex needs. Last year our perinatal mortality statistics here at UHCW for 2014 between January and December were 77 losses in total. These include mid trimester loss, stillbirth and neonatal death. We have a gynae specialist nurse who cares for parents experiencing earlier loss. Um, and we also have a level three neonatal unit um, with um, eight ITU beds and eight high dependency beds for babies. We also have um, a fetal medicine department with two fetal medicine consultants who see around 1,500 to 2,000 patients every year. And we have a very well established centre for reproductive medicine. At our recent CQC visit in March, our maternity services overall were found to be good. However, the maternity bereavement service was highlighted as an area of outstanding practice. So what we provide um, for our bereaved families at Coventry is that we have four family rooms in maternity and we have two similar rooms on the neonatal unit. And these rooms are double ensuite rooms um, where parents can stay together with their baby if they so wish. We also have two cold cots, which are the gel mattresses that baby lies on. And the gel mattress cools the baby's core temperature down so that parents are able to spend longer periods of time with their baby. We also have a number of... Um, we also have um, a mortuary viewing room um, which has been um, recently refurbished to create a more nursery-like environment for our parents with softer furnishings um, for mums that might have had a section or stitches um, and the softer lighting and um, we wanted to create um, a much nicer atmosphere for parents than the uh, traditional mortuary um, viewing rooms. We also have a number of volunteers out on the community that support the role and provide us with lovely memory boxes. We have a calligrapher um, who can scribe baby's name and date of birth on the box um, and he also creates these beautiful certificates for our families 
um, blessing certificates and birth certificates. And the birth certificates are particularly valued by parents who have had a baby born be before the legal age of viability and therefore aren't able to register the baby's birth or death. We have um, a very active local SANS group. The Coventry and District Local SANS group are a great support to the role and they meet um, once a month in the evening um, and then I run a support group every three months in the afternoon to try and capture the parents that aren't able to attend the evening meeting. And we also have an annual service of remembrance for our babies which is held in our multi-faith centre and all families um, who have lost a baby over the year are invited along to that service. So just going on to talk a little bit about my role, we're very fortunate in Coventry. Um, we've had a dedicated specialist midwife post here for 17 years. Um, and I've been in post since 1998. I'm a band seven. Um, and my background is that I'm a midwife, um, but I was also um, a sister on the neonatal unit for many years. And I also have a diploma in bereavement counselling um, that I undertook with the Child Bereavement UK. I work 30 hours per week and I'm supported by a band six midwife who works 15 hours a week and together we cover the working week nine to five um, and out of hours the service is supported by our hospital chaplains and there's always a hospital chaplain on call 24 hours a day. We provide immediate and long-term care and support for our families which includes home visits giving practical support with statutory requirements such as registering the death, the funeral arrangements and I've been trained to take post-mortem consent. We work very closely with the multidisciplinary team, our obstetricians, our paediatricians, um, the chaplains and the mortuary technicians and we provide support and counselling for our staff as required. Emotional care and support in the next pregnancy is a really large part of the role and, and it's really important to us here that we ensure that our families have a very robust subsequent pre pregnancy plan in place for the next pregnancy. And all our families will see the consultant at around 10 to 12 weeks um, with their um, placental histology results and the post-mortem results if there has been one. We also um, are involved in um, ed training and education of all grades of staff and all of our midwives receive um, an annual mandatory update on bereavement um, as do our medical staff and all new staff and we're also involved in uh, the teaching programme at Coventry University for the midwifery degree and the neonatal intensive care degree courses. So whilst at Coventry we are really fortunate to have a dedicated specialist midwife post, I recognise that there is a huge variation nationally in terms of perinatal bereavement provision. And I recognise the difficulties in taking forward new changes in practice if working alone. But I would like to just mention a few recent initiatives to you that I've been able to introduce since I've had the Band 6 midwife working alongside me. So undertaking training in post-mortem consent has led me to having um, an enhanced knowledge of the post-mortem procedure um, and this has led to improved patient care. It also means that women are no longer having to wait around for a doctor to become available to take post-mortem consent and it means if they have been discharged then they are able to go home and I'm able to pop out and, and take post-mortem consent in the patient's home. Also the introduction of placental examination at our regional centre Birmingham Women's Hospital has led to increased information regarding the current pregnancy loss but it's also led to enhanced subsequent pregnancy planning for the parents. 
Another recent initiative um, is that after a long process of negotiation, we've managed to arrange for one of our registrars from Coventry Register Office to visit UHCW two days per week. Um, and this is particularly beneficial for our inpatients um, and for parents who want to register their baby's death before going home. And it means that women and their partners are now being offered a choice over where to register the death of their baby. Um, and it means that they can avoid going into the city centre um, and being exposed to newborn babies at Coventry Register Office. We also have a dedicated counselling service which is provided by the Laura Centre. And the Laura Centre is an established counselling provider based in Leicester. Um, and the Laura Centre offer free specialist bereavement counselling to parents and, well, for anybody really that has been affected by um, the death of a, a child or the loss of a, a baby. Um, and they provide um, care and support to siblings and grandparents also. And we have two therapists who provide the service two days a week at the hospital and parents are able to self-refer. I was recently fortunate to be awarded the National Maternity Support Foundation's Award for Best Practice in Bereavement Care at the Royal College of Midwives Annual Midwifery Awards. And I'm very proud to have been designated as a Jake's midwife in memory of Jake Cantor, the son of the founders of the NMSF, Andrew and Rachel Cantor. Jake was stillborn in 2005. And through the funding that I was awarded, I've been able to improve the sensitive photography on offer to our parents through the Forever Photos project. Forever Photos is a package of initiatives that aims to give midwives the skills and confidence that they need to provide parents with a range of high quality photos of their baby that are sensitive and meaningful. The project involves a workshop using dolls and props and this allows the midwives to practice taking photos in an acted out role play. This gives them the skills and the confidence to know that they can do this in the real setting. And so far we've trained 40 midwives and there's also another day planned for the new year. Now I recognise that I'm in a very fortunate position and that winning the Royal College of Midwives Award and receiving the funding, it's given me the opportunity to further develop our local service. But as I said before, there is a huge variation regarding roles across trusts, both nationally and locally. Um, and there doesn't seem to be any standard job description. There's a huge variation in hours. Some midwives are working in dual, dual roles and have very few hours devoted to bereavement. And there's a huge inequality regarding pay banding. There's also a lack of understanding, I feel, about the role. Um, and I think maybe this is because, um, as with many specialist roles, we're not always visible in the clinical area. Um, and I think also sometimes our colleagues don't appreciate the emotional impact of the role on us and maybe um, because they think that we're dealing with bereavement on a daily basis that we're used to it or we're hardened to it somehow, but this isn't the truth. Um, and, you know, um, a lack of hours, a lack of resources and a lack of admin support and working in isolation makes it incredibly difficult to take new changes in practice forward. So what can you do to improve your service if you're a midwife at a trust where there's no bereavement support midwife or if you're an existing bereavement support midwife working with little or no support? I would say networking with other bereavement support midwives is a must and there's a huge wealth of knowledge and experience out there now and it's very very different to how it was when I first started when we didn't have internet or email and the only way really to contact with the bereavement midwives and there were very few at that time I have to say was um, through um, a telephone landline. 
and now it's just so much easier now to be able to reach out and um, get help and advice from other mid other bereavement midwives or people working in the area of bereavement. Um, and I can highly recommend the Royal College of Midwives um, newly launched bereavement network, which is an online platform for anybody working in the area of bereavement um, or, or anybody that has an interest in bereavement. Um, and there is um, a huge amount of advice and support um, and lots of very helpful forums to get involved with. It's worth considering using the SANS audit tool to review the care in your unit because it asks the question, is this unit giving good care and support to all parents whose baby dies here? Um, and this can be used to identify the gaps in your service and can be used as evidence um, to take to commissioners and service providers in order to make the necessary improvements and implement change. And mandatory training is essential for all of your staff in order for them to be able to support you in your role. And SANS um, last year launched their training for professionals, which I can highly recommend. Um, it's accredited by the Royal College of Midwives. Um, there is a fee involved. However, our local SANS group have agreed to fund 20 places in February, um, and SANS will come and provide the in-house training at your trust. So it is worth speaking to your local SANS group to see whether that would be possible in your area. And it's really worthwhile developing a number of bereavement key workers who can support the role when you're not around. It's also worth um, ensuring that your student midwives are involved when they come to work clinically with you. And it's a, an ideal opportunity for them to be able to observe and learn in a supportive environment because the students are the midwives of our future and it means that if they've had exposure with yourself then it means that when they do when they are qualified they're less likely to be fearful um, when caring for bereaved families As I said before, um, developing strong links with your multidisciplinary team is a must and we work very closely um, with our chaplains and they, as I said before, support the role when we're not here. They will meet with our families and accompany them to the chapel of rest to see their baby um, as well as providing spiritual and emotional care and also advice about the funeral and, and registering the death. Um, and we have um, a great group of mortuary staff who will take photographs and hand and footprints of the baby if we've not been able to do that. Um, we also have, um, um, as I said before, a great deal of support um, in the community from our volunteers. I would highly recommend having a regular one-to-one -one with your line manager um, because um, this will lead to them having a greater understanding about the role and the challenges that you are facing on a daily basis. Um, I meet with my manager now once a month um, and she's really helped me um, and supported me in taking more of the strategic things forward. And I can highly recommend um, undertaking a counselling course, although it is quite difficult in terms of um, getting funding. They are quite costly. However, there are many study days out there provided by SANS and also by Child Bereavement UK that can really help um, to improve your communication skills. Um, they will also help you to develop self-awareness um, and um, you know, the all-important boundaries because it really is important that you do take care of yourself if you're working in this kind of role. Um, but you'll also learn um, really good coping strategies as well and it's a great opportunity for networking and meeting others working in the same role. So to summarise, Building a quality bereavement service in maternity is around aspiring to create the highest standard of care and about making a real difference to families experiencing loss in late pregnancy and neonatal death.
And I just wanted to finish with this lovely family photo of Karen and Colin Bell and their two lovely children, Ross and Isla. Karen and Colin's first baby, Eden, was stillborn at term six years ago. And at the time, they really couldn't see a future ahead that included children. As you can see, they've gone on to have two successful pregnancies and two really lovely children. And they just wanted me to share their story, which is very positive. They received a lot of support in their subsequent pregnancies, um, from um, not just from me, but from the community midwives and their obstetrician. Um, and they wanted me to share their story just to demonstrate that with the right management and support, that there really can be life again after loss. And there really is a lot that we can do as healthcare professionals to ensure that the memories of parents experiencing loss in pregnancy are as pos positive as possible. Mm -hmm.